Welcome back to the workshop. This week we're making the Queen. So here we are designing the chess piece. I start with a sketch and I based my design on the Staunton uh, set roughly, uh, but with my own twist. Uh, once we've got a sketch, then we move into a program called Onshape, which is a web-based uh, 3D design CAD system. And if you're interested in the plans, you can just get them from the screenshot there. So here we are at the lathe and we're uh, parting off the blanks for the base and I always cut one extra just in case anything goes wrong uh, during the manufacture. And now we put it, uh, put the piece into the three jaw chuck uh, and we're using a backstop to uh, make sure that it's set in nice and straight and uh, so that we know uh, we can easily measure the, 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 the width of the piece. Um, and get them all the same height. Uh, once that's done we cut off the uh, the bevel and uh, there's a slight um, recess there on the end. Uh, once that side's done then we put it into a, a brass a collet or a pot chuck uh, that I made up uh, that just has a slit in it that lets me squeeze it in on the three-jaw chuck and once again we're using the backstop to make sure everything is parallel and uh, concentric and we're using a pointed, um, basically a thread cutting tool um, to cut a, a groove in the edge there. And I just calculated the distance I needed to uh, plunge the tool in to get the groove, the width that I wanted uh, to get. Um, a good use of trigonometry uh, there and uh, easily easy to calculate. So once that's done, um, we uh, change the tool out and um, we're going to cut a recess in the bottom, uh, which is where the felt pad will go uh, in the finished um, piece. And uh, the black pieces will be treated with a carburizing treatment uh, to differentiate them from, a, from the white pieces, which will remain silver. And I'm going to get that done professionally. Um, so there we go. We've got a nice finish on there and it looks perfect. Um, ready for the next step. Uh, next step is the body. Uh, now uh, once again we're facing off um, some stainless steel um, and this time we need to sander drill it and uh, drill through the body and ream it out uh, so we get a nice clean hole. Um, probably not absolutely necessary to ream it but uh, you know it's just nice uh, to do that. So here we are drilling and uh, final stage is the reamer. Give it a nice clean up and some Cutting oil, I like to use um, Rykol uh, cutting fluid with stainless steel. It really is a very good product um, uh, for stainless steel. Uh, makes such a huge difference. Um, so back to the lathe and we've got the, the part mounted on a little mandrel there and we're using the ball cutting attachment and this time we're using it to cut a convex shape. So the tool is flipped around uh, pointing outwards and uh, we're just uh, slowly um, taking uh, light cuts and uh, increasing the depth with the cross slide uh, till we get it um, to the size we need. And uh, here we are taking, uh, I'm not sure if there's a final cut, but uh, close to the final cut. Uh, and you can see with this 431 stainless steel, just get a beautiful cut. Um, and generally the shavings come off in one piece quite often. Uh, which is uh, very dangerous and I've got a few scars to prove it. I think later on in the uh, at some stage you'll see I've got a good band-aid on my thumb uh, from getting a piece taken out of me with that stuff uh, when I wasn't being as careful I should be, as I should be. And here we are uh, cutting a bevel on the bottom there and uh, there's a, a small one millimeter recess and then the bevel out and uh, finally we finish it up with some diamond paste on a piece of cloth and you get a lovely mirror finish there and it looks really nice. Okay now we're up to step three which is the crown which is really the most fun part to make. Uh, consists of several parts and this is uh, kind of I don't know uh, the outside bottom base crowny part uh, and again we're cutting a curve uh, same story as before then boring out the middle 
uh, and then cutting some bevels on the outside and also on the inside we cut a, a slight bevel there so that um, it leaves a nice uh, tapered uh, taper. Uh, now uh, we put the, um, the crown into the milling machine on the rotary table and we have silted the head and we're using the milling cutter to cut some uh, crenellations I believe is the term uh, uh, little grooves uh, into the top of the crown and they looked very fancy indeed um, I missed uh, the footage but um, we also did some uh, work with the ball mill on the under underside which you'll see in the final pictures uh, okay um, one other part of the crown is the tiny ball uh, this was a lot of fun to make, took me quite a few goes to get the technique down for this and we start with a little blank uh, with a, um, a thread on the end uh, and put it on a mandrel which has to be nice and, uh, uh, and rigid and then we use the ball turning attachment once again uh, I love my ball turning attachment, it's uh, incredibly handy and uh, I'd say definitely make one. And there you can see the final uh, polished up product uh, with a great big scratch on the end. Uh, now, uh, the uh, final part of the crown is this uh, little dome piece which fits inside the crowny piece and uh, forms a domey part. And uh, that's just once again uh, machined with the ball cutting attachment and given a quick polish up. And then uh, the rather uncomfortable uh, operation of uh, drilling a, a, a hole in the end of the knob there and uh, tapping that out with a 3mm tap and then we cut it off with the parting tool um, and uh, that, once again using a bit of rye coal to lubricate that and it should pop off any second just catching it in a bit of cloth because obviously it gets very hot okay so now we're machining the uh, collar piece which goes underneath the crown which consists of a, a concave curve and a convex curve uh, on a flat disc so uh, first thing we need to do is uh, drill it out which I forgot to do but uh, uh, halfway through parting it off I remembered and uh, fixed that up um, and then we put it back in the chuck and uh, machine it to correct thickness uh, before placing it on a mandrel where we use the ball cutting attachment to cut the convex curve uh, followed by the concave curve Now this is the last piece uh, we needed to finish um, and we can assemble uh, the Queen uh, in her final glory and have a good look at the result. Um, very happy with the result and uh, just one more piece now uh, to finish which is the King and uh, I'm uh, progressing on that at the moment uh, so uh, hopefully uh, the set will be finished before too much longer and I can finally present it to my dad uh, for his uh, belated 80th birthday. Uh, hopefully I'll get it to him before his 82nd birthday. <laughs> he's certainly uh, keen to get a hold of it and he's been following the progress um, very keenly. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll do the cinematic ending now and uh, show off all the photos and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, comment and uh, give me some feedback. I love to hear the comments and... Uh, and know what you thought uh, especially uh, whether you enjoyed the commentary uh, for this one because I've uh, trying something different here with a, a different commentary